Musketeers. I'm here to show you a little project I came up with tonight to engrave some designs on another. So this is my first video doing anything with Cricut and I just wanted to let you know that up front. It might be a little bit of a stream of consciousness and uh, a little disjointed but I just wanted to give it a shot and see how it goes. So tonight I was thinking about doing some things and I've made this kind of leather coaster where I've engraved some kind of a filigree type design onto it. And I just used one of these blanks that we got from the leather store. They came already cut, um, but you could of course get bigger sheets of leather or sides of leather as they call them and cut them out on a maker or other device as well if you wanted to. But these came just this way as a little three and a quarter inch circle coaster type device. So again, we're making one of these little um, engravings of some kind of a filigree design um, or any design of your choice, of course, onto a piece of leather. This was made possible from this little new toy we found on Amazon. It's an engraving tip um, from the Maker and Explorer and it's uh, available on Amazon. I'll have a link down below and it looks like this. It looks very much similar to the knife blade, but it's got just a little uh, sharp tip on it that's made of some reinforced metal. That's good for engraving, as they say, some acrylics, some plastics, and things of that nature. And I wanted to give it a shot and just trying to do some leather work. So here's what we're going to need. Um, number one, this engraving tool. Um, again, the link will be for Amazon in the notes. You'll need some leather pieces that you want to engrave on. Again, I'm using pre-cut circles that we got from the leather store. Um, you're going to need a little bit of water and a paper towel to uh, wet the leather. And you're also gonna need, um, if you follow my steps, a piece of strong grip uh, Cricut transfer tape as to uh, put on the mat, and I'll show you why when we get to that point. Um, but what it's gonna look like at the end when you pull it off is this, and I use the transfer tape to avoid all of this squishy stuff coming off the leather and uh, going onto my mat. I'd rather throw away a piece of transfer tape than to get all of that on my mat, because as you can see, leather does leave quite a bit behind. So without further ado, I'm gonna uh, show them over to our computer and kind of show you what the setup looks like, and we'll go from there. Okay, here we are in design space. I have this filigree design I have. Um, I'll show you in another video actually where I got that from. It was something I had and I scanned in the computer, so I'll go over that process as well um, in another video. But since I'm gonna put this on a round coaster, I'm gonna add a circle shape to get a size uh, comparison here. And my coasters are three and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna put that in there as a circle. Um, I'm going to just do a draw a box around, or of course you could do the select all up here to get everything on my mats, or I'm sorry, on my design space uh, canvas selected. And I want to align them on the center of each other. So I'm gonna use this option here for center. And just to make it easier to see, of course, I'm going to throw the deselect everything so I can only select my circle and arrange that to send it to the back so I can get my filigree design on top of it and see if I have enough um, space around the edges. And of course that all looks good. So I'm good with all of that. Um, and from here, I'm just gonna take away the circle because I don't wanna cut the circle or draw the circle anywhere. What I'm gonna do is go into the make it area, put it in here on the mat, and I'm gonna try and line it up as best I can. It looks like on the mat I've got, I've got the center at basically at the six mark and about one and a three quarter inches down. So as I kind of eyeball it um, for this video, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time getting it straight, but of course, you know, as we all know, this could be a long-term process of getting it to be perfectly straight. And there are other tricks you can use to put reference marks out on the mat and get everything to be perfectly centered and straight but I'm just trying to see if my little engraving tip will actually work on leather and how that process looks. So I'm not too concerned with having it centered right now. Um, once I've got that set, I'm gonna hit continue. Okay, so here we are on the Make It screen. And what I wanna show you here is that I had to set up a, a new special material. Um, I have the Cricut Maker and the steps I'm showing are specific to the Maker. Uh, I'm not sure offhand if the Explorer Air 2 has all the same exact settings, but I know you can use this tool in the Explorer Air 2 and you might have to change a few settings or use a preset um, option that has more passes and the highest pressure because that's what it's gonna take. Um, so in the Maker settings here, um, I went to Browse All Materials and I wanted to make my own material so I can use it more often and not have to remember exactly what I used. So once you're in the all materials section, if you look for it, it says material settings at the bottom left here, you get a chance to review all the material settings, what the cut pressures are, how many passes it makes and what kind of blade it takes. Um, and one way you can kind of go through and use what's already there, but I like to kind of start 
naming them myself and having my own set of tools. So what I did was I came down here to the very bottom and I said add new material and I called it, um, I think I called it uh, engraving leather, but we'll just make a new one here. So we're going to call it engraving leather here and I'm going to save it. And then you're going to be able to set some options. Um, you can only choose from fine point, deep point, and rotary blades. You can't use any other other blades like the knife blade yet, but that's okay. Um, since we're putting it in the, in the knife slot, we're just going to use the fine point blade, um, even though it's not actually a blade, we're just going to use that. And I'm going to set the pressure to the maximum of 350. And as you can as you see, that's that's a pretty decent you know engraving I'm going to get out of it. If you wanted to get deeper lines, you could, of course, turn the multiplier on and set it to you know, two, four, however many you think you might need um, to get an even deeper line. But I think I got a pretty decent um, work through uh, lines with just the one pass at the highest pressure. Um, and so that's the settings I made, and that's what I saved um, when I made my new one. And I will go and select that one. I set it as a favorite because I like to kind of be able to find these things fast. So you can see I've made a couple other ones. But my materials over here, the engraving tool for leather, I'm going to make that selection. And now it's ready to be put through the machine, and we're going to go over to the machine and watch it do its thing. Okay, so here we are at the Mega Machine. The device is ready, the image is already sent over, ready to load the mat. And here's where I'm going to use the, uh, what I mentioned before, the water and the paper towel here. Because um, one thing that helps leather engraving and cutting quite a bit is if the leather is just a little bit moist. I like to do this right before we start the machine just because it's going to evaporate anyway. So just a little damp paper towel and wipe it kind of around it and you'll see it changes color. And the goal is just again to get it a little bit damp. It doesn't need to be sopping wet or anything like that. Um, we look for kind of a uniform changing of the color of the leather as we go around this. And again, I just kind of dip the paper towel in the water just for a little bit. Um, very kind of just again damp, not overly wet here. But the leather being um, wet will help the engraver tool move across the leather and just kind of makes it a better overall cut. So with that being done, we're going to load our uh, engraving tool. It just goes right into the knife blade slot there. Just lock that in and we're going to go ahead and load and start our, our design here. And we are done. And we'll unload that mat and we will see what we come up with when I take it back over to my little workspace. Okay, here we are back at the little workspace. And you can see the design is now, you know, coming out really well. It's not perfectly centered. Um, that's always going to be a tricky piece. And uh, with more care and time with a ruler, you can get, get this kind of perfectly centered if you'd like. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get this off the mat. Takes a little bit of effort, so I'm going to grab my little tool here just to help get the piece of transfer tape lifted up. And that will come off the mat nicely. Put the mat aside. And I'm going to peel the leather off of our backing tape, and you'll see hopefully now why. Again, I like to use the backing tape because that would all be on our mat, which I don't think anybody wants to have all that on their mat because that's definitely going to lower the lifespan of your mat. And I think it's better you know, fiscally speaking, I suppose, to throw this little piece of transfer tape away than it is to have all that on your mat over time. So that's the reason I'm using the mat, because um, the back of leather could be really rough like that. But here we are, it's all finished. It's gonna be something that's gonna get um, drier over time as it dries out, and you'll see the, the it'll get more defined. This is a good time um, if you wanted to do any kind of leather uh, staining or painting to get that in there. But um, again, this was the engraving tool I set it to the maximum pressure of the maker and it just did one pass. You could do additional passes if you wanted to get these grooves to be even deeper as well. Um, but that's how I can use that engraving tool to do some designs on pieces of leather. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will be doing some more. Okay, so here we are back at Design View. Again, I'm doing this little supplemental video to show all the steps I would take to actually try to get this as perfectly centered as possible. And it takes a few little tricks I'm going to show you here. So we have our filigree design, okay? And if you remember on our mat, we have the coaster placed with its left edge on the five inch line and its top edge on the one inch line. So you can kind of see the grid and how that would correspond. Um, 
and this filigree is on top of a circle. So we can't take the five and the one of the filigree because that's just gonna be at the very top edge of the circle and then you have it kind of off center. So we need to keep this design relative to that circle or the coaster we're working with. So we need to add our shape in there. I'm gonna add a circle. I'm gonna make it three and a quarter inches because that's what our physical coaster is, okay? Um, we're now going to take these two objects and you can see them side by side. I'm going to draw the box around them to select them. You can also use the select all up here. Once you have them both selected, we're going to go ahead and align them and we're going to use the center option because I need them to be dead center on each other. And you'll notice the filigree disappeared because it's behind the circle. So I'm going to click in the white space over here to unselect everything so I can now come back and select just my circle. And I'm going to do the arrange option up here to send the circle to the back so I can now see my filigree that would be on top of a circle. Now. I need to move these together as a group, so I'm going to basically do the select all again. Um, we could use the attach option to make them a group or the group option up here. I'm gonna be getting rid of the circle shortly, so I don't wanna do that necessarily. But what we need to do is make this virtual representation of our coaster in filigree match the physical location on our map, which again, left edge was at the five inch mark, top edge was at the one inch mark, so we go up to our position so we can do it exactly, because like you could of course drag it around, but I like to do things as exact as possible. So I'll use these boxes up here in our X position, which is gonna be the left side of our, of our object here, I'm gonna put it five. In our Y position, which is the top edge, I'm gonna put it one. And so now I've got this virtual representation of the coaster and the filigree at the exact location on the screen that I needed to be on the mat, okay? So what's the trick? Here we go. If I get rid of the circle, which is something that's representing just a physical um, visual point of the coaster, but we don't want the machine to actually carve the circle outline or do anything with that circle, so we need to get rid of it. And at this point, you may be thinking, great, we have this on the map where I want it. If I go to make it, I'll be set to go. Well, here's what's gonna happen. Many of you may already know this. When you click on make it, it puts everything on your map at the top leftmost corner. I would never be able to drag this exactly where it was on the screen. I could get pretty close, right? I think in, you know that's what we did last time and you saw pretty close was not close enough and it was very much off center. So to be more exact, we're gonna use what we're gonna call a reference point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel this. You'll see it's still where it was in relation to the coaster, which is where I want it to be. But I need a reference point. I need to make sure that when I go click make it, this piece of filigree stays at exactly the 5.5 and 1.401 position that we now see it at. How do I do that? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to make a reference point. And so we use any shape you want. I like using circles. That just kind of makes it easy. Um, it needs to be a small circle because this object will get imprinted or cut or engraved or whatever your tool you're using, the tool will act on this object. So we want to make it small so it acts on something very tiny. So I'm going to just make it a 0 0.05 circle, makes it really small, a little dot on the screen if you will. I need to place this at a specific point that I can find very easily on my mat. And I'm going to use basically the one in one. Um, again, I use the one and one, like as I mentioned before, I leave the, the zero to one on top and left empty because of the quarter inch basically area of the map that will never get used. Um, and I just like to be as exact as possible, so I don't want to have to account for that quarter inch border that just never gets used. So here we go. If you can follow this, we've got our reference point, we have the filigree where it needs to be. And now I'm, I'm going to select both of these, which I like to draw the boxes. Again, you can always go up here and do select all. And to keep the filigree at this exact location when we go to make it, we need to attach these two objects, okay? Now they're attached, they will operate as one object, they will be on one map when we go to make it. And when we go to make it, all we will have to do is ensure that we place the dot edge of our new object at the one and one. So here we go. And go to make it. Again, the entire object that we had attached, this dot way over here with this filigree, it gets pushed to the very top edge of the mat, but again, there's that quarter inch area that never gets used, which is kind of hard to account for. So all I have to do now is move this entire object as one attached object and make sure my dot starts at the one and the one. 
and that we can get pretty close. I mean, I wish that Cricut would have an opportunity to you know type in a number so I can put it at exactly one and one because I might be at what 1.01 or something like that. You can't really tell. But this method of using this little dot as a anchor point or a reference point is how we're gonna be able to tell the machine exactly where to place this design when we have that circle coaster around it, okay? So we've got it all set up and now we're gonna hit continue and we're gonna start the process of actually cutting this or carving this into our leather. Okay, so here we are at the machine. You can see again that we have our uh, coaster. It's all been um, already dampened. Like I mentioned before in the video, we like to work with wet leather because it helps the machine and the uh, tools. And again, for reference, we have our five inch line marked against our left edge of our circle with our one inch line against the top edge of our circle. That's gonna hopefully perfectly correspond to that reference point we put at the 1.1 mark. And as I go down here, I'm gonna load it into the machine and we'll see how it comes out. Now it's done, so we'll unload our mat and we'll take a look at it. It looks pretty darn well centered at this point. We go back over to the work area and uh, check it out in better light. Okay, here we are back at our uh, work area. I'm going to again remove our piece from the mat here. And I like to grab a little tool because my fingers don't do too well. All right, so we'll just grab this off of our mat, put the mat aside, and see how we did. Again, I'm going to take it off. And again, just an example, this is why I like using the, the contact paper to protect the mat from getting all that schmutz on it. So now we've got the few that we've done and you'll see, I think if you look at this one, you'll see it's pretty close to being perfectly centered with those few extra steps of the reference point. That one's gonna look pretty good. We've got this one here, which we did, as you can see, was not very centered on this edge. We didn't take any care with that at all. Um, and the first one I ever did, um, I did okay with. I wasn't paying attention to the centering again because I was just trying to see if the tool actually worked. But you may see these little lines right here. I know I can't get them too close to you. Um, on the maker, it has those little white guards or white rollers that you need to move all the way off the, the surface um, when you're doing things with thicker material, especially with leather, because those two little wheels left these impre impressions the first time I used it and didn't remember to move those white pieces, those white rollers, all the way off to the right so they didn't imprint onto the uh, material. So just be aware of that if you work with thicker stuff uh, like soft leather and woods and things like that. Uh, move those rollers so you don't get those little marks. But here again is the one we just made using our reference point. And I think you'll agree that's pretty darn lean, perfectly centered, um, especially considering that the design itself is not 100% symmetrical because of the way it came out. Um, kind of a hand-drawn looking thing, but that's, that's what we got. Hope you learned something new and a good trick, and we will see you in the next video.